On April 15, 2024, significant diplomatic shifts unfolded in the Middle East. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, and the UAE extended olive branches to the United States, expressing clear intentions to distance themselves from Iran. Particularly noteworthy was Saudi Arabia's interest in signing a historic defense agreement with the United States, marking a substantial move for this heavyweight player in the Middle East. Just two days prior, Kuwait had refused to allow the U.S. military to use its military base. However, there was a dramatic shift in attitude as Kuwait now proclaimed unbreakable U.S.-Kuwait relations. Furthermore, the UAE went a step further by openly supporting Israeli airstrikes against Iran's defense. Meanwhile, the Iraqi prime minister's visit to the U.S. not only pledged to establish strong security cooperation, but also marked the first country to utilize U.S. credit-guaranteed loans to purchase American-made helicopters. This turnaround was significant for Iraq, which had previously demanded the withdrawal of U.S. troops. Isolated and seeking assistance, Iran looked towards Russia and China. However, both Russia, embroiled in an internal turmoil and war, and China, facing economic challenges, may find it hard to offer assistance. Israel's military victory on April 14th came as a pivotal moment reshaping the Middle East landscape. It led to a sharp decline in the regional influence of China, Russia, and Iran, while the United States' dominance became even more unshakable. In the geopolitical contest between China, Russia, and the U.S., the balance in the Middle East clearly tilted towards the U.S. A new power dynamic in the Middle East is gradually emerging, leaving Iran with no option but to retreat. However, the evolution of the situation in the Middle East is not immediate. For years, China and Russia have sought to expand their influence in the region, competing with the U.S. As Iran faces setbacks, the attitudes and responses of China and Russia deserve attention. Over the past decade, the CCP and Russia have increased their investment in the Middle East to enhance their influence. Chinese military companies continuously invited officials from Middle Eastern countries to visit the Ala Shan target range in Inner Mongolia, showcasing their missile and drone swarm technology, among other so-called advanced weapons. Russia actively promoted its S-400 air defense missile system. However, these displays are superficial, with Chinese weapons reportedly heavily reliant on American chips. Furthermore, the performance of Russian-made weapons in real combat situations in the Middle East and Ukraine have been severely lacking. In contrast, the multi-layered defense systems deployed by the United States and Israel easily intercepted Iranian missiles. The United States Standard Missile 3 can even reach space to intercept incoming threats. The combat capabilities of Chinese and Russian weapons pale in comparison, operating on completely different scales. Unlike China and Russia's overt weapon sales tactics, the United States displays its weapons much more discreetly. Top-tier U.S. military equipment is strictly guarded, with even allies rarely given access. For instance, Raytheon, the manufacturer of the Patriot missile system, ensures its products are not sold to Russia or its allies. Any design leaks will result in severe consequences. Only close allies like the U.K., Australia, and Canada are privileged to glimpse the true capabilities of top U.S. military equipment. Purchasing American weapons also implies following the U.S. militarily and diplomatically. Without meeting these criteria, even with substantial funds, acquiring advanced U.S. equipment is impossible. The less ostentatious the United States is, the more people become interested in its formidable military capabilities. People hope that this world police can subdue rogue elements when needed, as depicted in Hollywood blockbusters with high-tech weapons and massive aircraft carriers, symbolizing the power needed to maintain global peace. The joint U.S.-Israeli strike against Iranian missiles on this occasion showcased U.S. military strength. This event not only affected the Middle East, but also had implications for the situation in the Taiwan Strait concerning China. Iran's military attack on Israel performed poorly, with 60% of the missiles failing to leave Iran airspace and crashing. This outcome severely shook Xi Jinping's confidence in unifying Taiwan. If the PLA were to attack Taiwan, they may not escape a similar fate. A large number of PLA missiles would either be intercepted by Taiwan's advanced air defense systems or land in mainland territory. With the Russo-Ukrainian war at a standstill, confidence in forcibly unifying Taiwan has already been shaken. Iran's disastrous defeat further worsens the situation, with reports indicating confidence in reunifying Taiwan dropping from a solid 100% to a mere 20%. 
Moreover, PLA soldiers are aware that forcing Taiwan's reunification would only lead to their downfall. The plight of the Russian military in Ukraine serves as a cautionary tale. Rational voices within the military are advising Xi Jinping to abandon the idea of forcible reunification. They believe that while Xi Jinping's long-term dictatorship may not be ideal, it's acceptable, but plunging countless soldiers at the cost of their lives into a war they cannot win is unacceptable. If Xi Jinping persists, these military leaders understand that while Chinese missiles may not penetrate the U.S. missile defense system, making the PLA's air defense system ineffective when it comes to defending the South China Sea is still achievable. Xi Jinping also also understands the sentiments of these generals. He is afraid, and his resolve to forcibly reunify Taiwan is wavering. On the other end of the China-Russia alliance, Russia has played a disgraceful role in the Middle East situation. Evidence suggests that Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7th was likely orchestrated by the Kremlin. The aim was to prompt Israel to flatten the Gaza Strip, diverting attention from Russia's actions in Ukraine, allowing Russia to freely launch a new offensive in Ukraine. Indeed, just three days after Hamas and Israel went to war, the Russian military launched a new attack on Ukraine, altering the battlefield situation to date. In the event of Iran's missile attack on Israel, the Kremlin publicly called for restraint, with Putin even speaking to the Iranian president to prevent the situation from escalating. However, behind the scenes, Russia was encouraging Iran to attack Israel. A former general from the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service revealed on a Telegram channel that Russia provided Iran with Israeli target data, satellite navigation, strategies to penetrate air defense, even sending mercenaries to assist Iran in planning and providing optimal times for airstrikes. Iran indeed followed Russia's advice and launched the airstrikes on the 13th. Analysis from the U.S. War College also noted similarities between Iran's attack and Russia's tactics in Ukraine. Russia's aim was to sow chaos in the Middle East, diverting Western attention from Ukraine, enabling Russia to easily swallow up Ukraine. However, Iran's failure and the impressive performance of Israel's air defense capabilities and aid from its allies left a deep impression on the Kremlin and the general staff of the Russian armed forces. They generally believe that if engaged in direct military confrontation with NATO countries, the Russian military will struggle against Western modern ballistic defense and air defense systems. Their planned operations in the Baltic countries now seem doomed to fail. Out of frustration, Russia has even considered returning several missiles imported from Iran, but ultimately saw no benefits and can only swallow its pride. Apart from nuclear weapons, Russia seems to have no cards to threaten the West with. Russia's attempt to distract the U.S. from Ukraine and shift its focus failed. The barrage of ballistic missiles woke the U.S. up. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, under pressure from Hawks and his party, began pushing a series of foreign aid bills, including funding for Ukraine. Johnson stated in a speech that he had full confidence in the intelligence briefing, identifying Xi Jinping, Putin, and Iran as the axis of evil and are in coordination. Allowing Putin to continue his dominance in Europe would lead to further aggression, possibly targeting the Balkans or even a showdown with NATO ally Poland. Johnson expressed a willingness to send bullets to Ukraine rather than American children to the battlefield. He emphasized the need to do the right thing in the face of historical judgment and was prepared to take personal political risks for his plan for a House vote on foreign aid to Ukraine. Johnson's remarks greatly increased the hope of passing the Ukraine aid package a House on April 20th. Johnson also had a private conversation with former President Trump. After Johnson's statement, it's even less likely for Trump to openly oppose aid to Ukraine. The U.S. is once again assuming the responsibility of a leader in the free world, thwarting Russia's conspiracies, which is undoubtedly disastrous for Putin. The U.S. Secretary of State Blinken spoke with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi before Iran launched missiles at Israel, warning China and Russia's support for Iran. However, sincere persuasion did not persuade Iran's provocative actions, but instead confirmed China's covert support for Iran. Faced with the situation, the U.S. and Israel decided they must strike back, thoroughly defeating Iran while also preparing to deal with Russia and China. In the early hours of April 19, 2024, Israel launched large-scale airstrikes on multiple targets in Iran, Syria, and Iraq in direct response to Iran's previous attacks. According to reports, the targets spanned seven cities in Iran, including Tehran, Fulad, Iraq, Natanz, Hajabad, Boucher, and Abbas port. Additionally, Israel targeted radar stations in Syria's Suwaida province and areas in Iraq, including the vicinity of Baghdad and Babylon province. Israel's airstrikes primarily targeted military bases in Iran used to launch missiles against Israel. 
During the operation, Iran first utilized drones to create chaos within Iran's borders, diverting attention from Iran's air defense systems. Subsequently, Iraq launched precise guided missiles such as Extra and Rampage over Iraqi airspace, striking the targets. One key target was the city of Isfahan and its surrounding areas, located approximately 450 kilometers south of Tehran. According to reports from Sky News Arabic, the region witnessed at least three major explosions. Isfahan is home to several important nuclear facilities in Iran, including the Isfahan Nuclear Technology Center and the Natanz Uranium Enrichment Facility. It's noteworthy that the Isfahan Nuclear Technology Center, a miniature neutron source reactor provided by China. Previously, Iran had threatened to launch neutron bullets if attacked. This airstrike undoubtedly dealt a heavy blow to Iran's nuclear program. In Isfahan province in central Iran, Israeli missiles and drones destroyed the S-200 air defense missile site of Iran's Air Force 8th Tactical Fighter Base. Ironically, just the previous week, this base had launched missile attacks against Israel. While the S-200 site at the base was destroyed, surviving S-300 missile launch vehicles were urgently relocated and hidden in nearby residential areas. All of this was captured on camera by local residents. U.S. officials reported that Israeli missiles hit their targets, but one missile fell in Iraqi territory during flight and was found by the Iraqi military. After careful examination, Iraq confirmed that this missile was a Rafael ROX, air-launched ballistic missile manufactured by Israel. The ROX missile is a precision-guided air-launched ballistic missile developed by Israel's Rafael company for the F-16I fighter jet, known for its high accuracy and long range. The timing of this airstrike holds symbolic significance as it coincided with the 84th birthday of Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Israel's action can be likened to a resounding slap in the face for Iran's supreme leader. Iran had previously threatened unprecedented retaliation even to the slightest Israeli counterattack. Now, with Israel showing significant force, the world is eagerly awaiting Iran's response. If retaliation is once again thwarted by Israel, it will undoubtedly further shake the confidence of Iran and its allies. However, some opinions suggest that the real purpose of Israel and the United States is to cut off Russia's supply of weapons from the Middle East by striking Iran, thereby restraining Russia's actions on the Ukrainian battlefield. As the situation develops, the United States is escalating accusations against China for aiding Russia, laying the groundwork for sanctions against the Chinese Communist Party. According to the Associated Press, the United States has discovered that China has provided large amounts of dual-use goods to Russia, aiding in the reconstruction of its military-industrial complex to deal with Ukraine. On the 15th, under pressure from journalists, a spokesperson for the U.S. Department of Defense publicly confirmed this. According to reports, 90% of the microelectronic products imported by Russia last year came from China and were used in the manufacturing of weapons and equipment to confront Ukraine. Analysts believe that China has been assisting Russia in various ways, including providing mechanical tools, electronic components, optical equipment, and even drone and missile technology. The U.S. believes that China's actions have endangered international order and must be responded to. China and Russia became a key topic at the Group of Seven G7 foreign ministers' meeting held in Italy on the 17th. Secretary Antony Blinken will also visit China for four days, starting April 23rd, to ensure a final ultimatum. Various signs indicate that the U.S. is determined to strike back against the China-U.S. duo, implementing financial sanctions, freezing overseas assets, cutting off financial networks, and causing heavy damage to the economies and financial systems of both countries. It won't be long before the renminbi may become worthless. It is reported that Israel may deploy advanced weapons such as electromagnetic pulse weapons, F-35 and F-15 fighter jets to carry out precise strikes on targets such as Iranian oil fields, military facilities, and nuclear facilities, rendering Iran powerless to retaliate. Meanwhile, the U.S. will provide intelligence and logistical support, coordinate with allies to impose comprehensive sanctions on Iran, cut off its oil exports, trigger internal turmoil in Iran, and create conditions for regime change. There are reports that exiled members of Iran's former Pahlavi dynasty in the U.S. are preparing to return to Iran.
Iran to take over the government. High-energy microwave weapons can unleash immense power in a very short time, severely damaging enemy electronic devices, not only crippling military forces, but also disrupting communication and navigation systems. If Israel becomes the first to use electromagnetic pulse weapons in the Middle East, the blinding effect on enemy forces would be unprecedented. In addition to mysterious high-tech weapons, the United States quietly approved military sales to Israel in early April and late March. According to the latest contract, the U.S. will sell 25 F-35 and 50 F-15 fighter jets to Israel. Currently, the Israeli Air Force has a total of 280 fighter jets, and these two military sales will directly increase the size of the Israeli Air Force by one-fourth. The conflict has lasted for almost half a year, during which the Israeli Air Force flattened Gaza without losing a single fighter jet. The recent U.S. arms sales clearly indicates preparation for expanding the war. With these 75 advanced fighter jets, even if there are losses due to a large-scale escalation of the conflict, the Israeli Air Force can quickly replenish its resources. Israeli's development of external drop tanks enables hypothetical strikes against Iranian targets without refueling its F-35 fighter jets. Additionally, a new one-ton bomb has been integrated into the aircraft's arsenal without compromising the stealth radar signals used to evade anti-aircraft systems. The bomb was developed by the state-owned company Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, based in Haifa, and has anti-jamming capabilities. Experts warn that despite decades of preparation by the Israeli Air Force, if a decision is made to attack Iranian territory, the Israeli Air Force will face a dangerous challenge. Challenge. Tehran has purchased S-300 and S-400 air defense systems from Russia. In November 2022, Iran officially unveiled an improved version of the Bavar 373, a system that surpasses the Russian-made S-400 in certain aspects. The latest version of the Bavar 373 can lock onto targets up to 400 kilometers away, including long-range ballistic missiles, drones, and F-35 stealth fighters, tracking 60 targets and simultaneously attacking six within a range of 300 kilometers. The Bavar 373 has yet to engage in combat operations outside of Iran's military exercises. Observing the U.S. approach to problem-solving in the Middle East and elsewhere, it's evident that it continually innovates and upgrades its methods. From the Desert Storm operation to wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, large-scale land and air forces were deployed to wage modern warfare. Later, the approach shifted from supporting color revolutions such as the Jasmine Revolution, which toppled regimes in countries like Iraq and Libya without deploying ground troops. This time, with U.S. backing, Israel utilized high-tech means to strike Iran, achieving the goal of weakening Iran without deploying U.S. ground forces.